In today's episode of The Swing Report, we are looking at the PRGR Portable Launch Monitor from Superspeed, a nice portable small device that measures club speed, ball speed, smash factor, and total distance. Golfers, if you're interested in this product, make sure you check out secondswing.com. Also, skip to the final chapter of the video for our final take. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf and I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing in the Tour van today. We've got the PRGR Portable Launch Monitor uh, from Super Speed Golf. So as we know, Super Speed Golf, uh, they're all about speed training, uh, helping golfers gain more speed, but you also have to measure that speed. And so the way that they're helping golfers do that is with this portable launch monitor. Like you have in your hand right here, it's not a huge device, it's very lightweight, easy to move around, but gives you the key measurements you're looking for when you're trying to gain that speed. Yeah, it's, uh, club speed's important. If yeah. you want to hit the ball further, it's the number one re reason to generate more potential distance. Yeah. If you're able to increase your club speed, you can mm -hmm. increase more distance. And yeah. we all know that everyone likes to chase club speed. I did a series doing super mm -hmm. speed training protocols. Um, so I was using a radar that wasn't this device. All it was giving me was club speed. Yeah. Now, this is going to give you club speed, ball speed, smash factor, carry, and total distance, which is a nice little added benefit at a pretty small price. Right, exactly. That, that's one of those. It's very affordable. So while you're you know, investing in the super speed program and, and um, developing your speed, you can also, for not much more you know, of a price, you can add in the measurements too. So you know it can see the progress that you're making if you don't have access to a launch monitor or, or something like that. So um, getting into some of the tech here. So I mean... There's a lot of technology packed into this little device and for, again, like you said, not a very uh, steep price. But the cool thing about it too is it's not just for golf. You can use it for baseball and soccer and other sports too to measure, like for example, pitching speed or bat speed in baseball. So it's not just about golf, although for our sake, it is about golf. Right, yeah, and soccer is interesting. We were, yeah. we were discussing like foot speed or yeah, yeah. ball speed. I guess every sport wants to measure some kind of speed, yeah, so it, which is true. always fun. One thing I do like about it is you can toggle between yards or meters depending on what mm -hmm. metric system that, you, that you're using. Uh, the other thing is it keeps a history. Yeah. So it keeps a history up to 500 shots. So you can kind of click through here yep. and look at your previous history. You can look at, your, see your gains over time yep. and see where, you, like, where you're at there as well. It works indoors and outdoors. So that's really important because most of the club speed training is probably gonna be done indoors. Yeah. But you can also take it out with you on the range and mm -hmm. see how far that you are hitting the ball. Right. Exactly. That's I mean, that's one of those key things too, especially for where we live here in Minnesota, where five months out of the year, pretty much it's too cold to be going outside in golf course courses, driving ranges are closed. So you're doing a lot of this training inside and then you can bring that in the garage or wherever it might be, do your speed training and still measure your speed. So uh, and then one of these things too is is they've improved uh, you know the ability to read high lofted wedges, which we're going to actually test here today. I got my 58 degree wedge, but we're going to see how that does, and then kind of see what TrackMan measures as well, and see how close it is. Because obviously budget wise, that's a very very different price. <laughs> right. Um, so, but if it's going to be you know a pretty slim margin of difference, then that's a pretty cool and neat product by Superspeed here. Yeah, I mean, all you're seeing is the data in front of you here. You're mm -hmm. not seeing it projected on the screen, or you're right. not getting all the other data points that you right. want to get, but it'll be interesting to see how close it is in accuracy. As you mentioned, we'll test it with your 58 degree wedge, we'll test it with seven iron, and we'll test it with driver. Yeah, I'm excited to see, uh, because again, a product like that for its price, um, I think would be a huge hit for golfers here. Well, let's, uh, let's get you to hit some shots today, and we'll see what happens. All righty. Okay, uh, Drew, looks like you have just been getting this, uh, this set up. Notice it's on a raised surface behind the hitting mat. Yeah, so while our, the hitting mats here are raised from the floor, so we just evened out the you know, level at which so that way it picks up the best. But three and a half to five feet behind the ball is um, you know, how you're setting it up, and then you just point it towards your target. So we've got it set up behind, pointing towards target, about three and a half feet behind, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Perfect. Well, let's start with a 58 degree wedge. Oh, that was a nice swing there. So how are we looking on that first shot? Well, we got a club speed of 84, ball speed of 87, and a carry distance of 103. Wow. That's pretty good start. That's a really good start, actually. Yeah, that doesn't you know, get really closer yeah. than that, I don't think. 
I'm, I was really interested with wedge because we know spin is going to influence distance. So right. I'm curious because I'm going to say the carry distance and total distance with this is not going to be perfectly accurate all right. the time because it's not going to pick up spin. Right. It's I not going to pick up attack angle. And this track man is measuring spin and, you know, all the swing, you know, numbers like path and, and face angle and yep. attack angle and all that. that. That matters in distance. Where on here, it's just kind of looking at the... Club speed, ball speed, distance, and smash factor. So. Right. But so far, that was a good start. Very nice. Very similar shot. Nice, consistent swing there. We've got 83 club speed, 87 ball speed, 104 total. Wow. Well, Drew, 58 degree wedge, first two swings with notice. Over 100 yards. That's pretty far for a 58 degree wedge. Let's try one with just a little bit less speed. Okay. We'll do that. Plus, those first two are very similar, so maybe we'll see if it can maintain the accuracy on a different type of swing here. We've got a club speed of 70. Pretty good. Ball speed 72. And it looks like the carry distance of 67. All right. So that's where that difference of you know, the spin and, and everything matters there because I would imagine it registered a lot more spin than the track man did because I did hit kind of not hit it perfectly. So Yep. Yep. So there's I mean you got your club speed, you got your ball speed, but the And the, the smash factor was off. one point, you know, oh two and one point yep. oh four. So Yeah. Interesting. But overall, I mean I mix up the speed and it, it caught the speeds well. Like right. really well, which is I think the important part here, especially with super speed training. Yeah, no, if you're, if you're looking for speed training, yeah, at the lower speeds with that, with that 58 degree wedge, it was very mm -hmm. accurate. All right, seven iron now, huh? It's a little bit right. All right, so we got a club speed of 94, ball speed 125. So the smash of 132, that's pretty darn good. And then the register carried at 194, but again, some speed, uh, yep. the, the measurements there on distance are a little bit different, but club and ball speed are very, very close. Yeah, club, ball, club speed, ball speed, smash factor, all very close. One thing we also didn't talk about is the strike location as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not picking up that either, too. So if you catch it thin or, or, or right, fat right. or on the toe or the heel, that's going to influence that, that right. carry distance there, too. But it's interesting that the ball speed has been very, very consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it's so. been very close every time. Kind of went after that one a little bit. It's pretty good again. Club speed 96, ball speed 127, smash 131, carry at 197. All right. So once again, same same trend. You know, club speed, ball speed are pretty on you know on target. They're almost identical. Or they really are. They're almost the same. But then you get into the other metrics, and that's where you pay a little bit more for right. a, a device that's going to give you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Kind of mishit that one, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, 94 club speed, 123 ball speed, so. Impressive. It's right on top of it, huh? Okay. Yep. That's good. Okay, so now with driver, You'd think you'd see a little bit more difference with a longer club, maybe, or more speed being generated. I mean, if this thing's really accurate, I still think it, it, club speed's got to be pretty close. Yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd think. Uh, one thing I also bring up here too is if you leave the face open or if that face is closed, that's also going to influence that club speed number just a little bit. The way the radar is going to be tracking. Right. With the, too. And the distance and stuff. The too. distance stuff there a little bit there well as well. But uh, I'm surprised. I'm impressed here so far, and I'm. Mm -hmm. Intrigued with driver because I mean this is really the main focus, right? Most right. people driver are trying to driver is the big dog that you yeah. are trying to improve on when you you know uh, do these super speed training. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Some good speed there. Oh wow! So we got one sixteen club speed, one seventy four ball speed. Mm-hmm. And good. then. Yeah, the carry of 310, which is actually a lot closer too. So yeah, that's yeah, it's really close there with the driver. Yeah, the the club speed has been very good. Club speed, ball speed. Mm -hmm. That was also a really good swing there, Drew. I don't usually don't see you carry one over 300 yards. 
I, I, I usually don't. Yeah. It's just like I caught that one a little bit on the <laughs> toe with some gear effect to it, and <laughs> it worked out. There's that low draw. 118, club speed 174, ball speed. 117.9, 174.3, yeah. God, it's on the money, isn't it? it it's really, really impressive. Because you see, you know, these, these monitors like this that measure this and they're, you know, down $200 or under that. It's, to see it match up this well is, it's very impressive. Yeah. All right, that'll be interesting because I did not hit that well. A little low left swing there. Oh, actually the numbers still are still matching up. <laughs> 118 club speed, 168 ball speed, so I did not hit it good. Yep. 142 smash, which is making sense. So yep. that's. What about the distance numbers? See, that's where things get interesting. It says I carry 295, <laughs> but it probably doesn't factor in that my club was, you know, closed, closed. and shut a ton at impact. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, it's it's not tracking the the ball flight. And right. as we can see with the bull flight there, it's yeah. low, uh, very low. So that's very the next light. part of super speed training is gaining speed, but making sure you do that while also being able to manage your club face, which I think is the next part. Right. But yeah. For strictly talking about speed here, I mean, it's measuring everything very precisely. I'm super impressed, actually. Yeah, I for the for the lower price that you get a unit that, that gives you just a couple more data points, mm -hmm. it's very, very impressive. It's, it's still focused on the overspeed training for right. sure, as that's the main focus with this unit. Yes, you can still get some other data points that is somewhat reliable with regards to the carry and total distance, but you do need more, more factors to go into it to yeah. really rely oh, yeah. on it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to the range and, and hit a whole bucket of balls and say write those numbers down with this unit, yeah. I would do a little bit more gapping analysis without that unit. To yeah, be but I mean, I'm, I'll have to maybe go back here and look in our kind of the final segment here. We'll go back and look and maybe see how different things were because I can't imagine either club or ball speed were a difference of more than a mile an hour. It seemed like it was right on the money every time. Right. I don't, I don't think there was one that was over a mile an hour difference with either club speed or ball speed. And that's, and that's with lower speeds and that's with the faster speeds. Right. And that's impressive. I mean, is tracking just the exact same club speed right. as what TrackMan is tracking. Right, so. it's perfect. I mean, it's, yeah. it's right on the money. Yeah, so if, you, if, you're, if you're looking for over speed training, super speed training, whether you, whatever training device you're using, it's a, it's a great unit that we're mm -hmm. gonna be stocking here at Second Swing. So Thomas, we're wrapping up and we've got the numbers on the screen. Now there was a couple times where I took a practice swing and it only registered that club speed in the practice swing. So we've got a couple of different, uh, you know, there's some shots on here that didn't have all the measurements because of that. But the actual shots of, the, of that we tracked, I'm going through them all right now. And, you know, from this most recent driver swing, which was 118 club speed, 168 ball speed. Very close, right? We go back. 118 and 174, 116, 174, all right. within one. One within one mile an hour with club speed and bull speed. And that was with driver. And then going down to seven iron Thomas, first swing here was 94 club speed, 123 ball, then 96 and 127, and then 94 and 125. So it's, it's lining up so similarly. And then I go down to wedge, and this is that slower wedge swing I had, 70 and 72. 83 and then 87, and then lastly 84 and 87. So, right. I mean, looking at the screen, it's all, those numbers are all dialing up and measured, you know, very, very close together. Yeah, it's a great device. Uh, let's face it, you know, in Minnesota, it's getting to that time of the year where it's courses are closed. People yeah. focus on, I'm going to be focused on doing some overspeed training again in the, in the winter time and trying to keep up with it this time. Um, it's going to be a great device to play around with. You don't need to be, you don't have to have a fancy thousand dollar or oh. plus device to get right. some general numbers, which right. is really nice. Yeah, I know. And I've watched you do the super speed training protocols. It doesn't take a ton of time during the day to get them done. So you can go out to the garage, pull this out there, and you can measure your speeds too. Really nice device here from super speed. And like you said, a lot of, you know, this isn't just a, a Midwestern United States thing either, where the 
the weather's too cold to golf. It's all over the globe. There's times of the year where courses are closed and it's the weather's not great enough to play golf, but you can still keep your swing intact and your speed increasing with the help of this PRGR device and the super speed training, of course. So um, yeah, I think we get the stamp of approval here from Thomas Campbell and myself. Uh, if you're interested in this device, make sure you check out secondswing.com. It, it will be online here uh, and you'll be able to purchase it. But otherwise, Thomas, I think, again, big time recommendation here from us. A really good device here. Yeah, I love that it's performing well inside and no doubt it's going to get the same numbers outside mm -hmm. as well.